The introduction of The Simpsons has to be the most famous TV show introduction of all time. And for our purposes today, realize it or not, I'd be willing to bet that this intro has done more to subtly change your perception of nuclear power and the nuclear industry more than any other single piece of media, and not in a positive way. Case in point, and the point of this very episode, this moment, which you yourself may have seen literally thousands of times. This isn't just part of the intro. This is a depiction of the worst nuclear technician ever. This isn't just dumb in that classic Homer J. Simpson kind of way. No, this is deadly. Now entering the facility. First of all, a bit of myth busting. Despite the well-known trope that everything that's radioactive glows green, nothing in nuclear power or the nuclear industry or nuclear as a thing glows like this, okay? Nothing. Nuclear reactors can glow blue in water via Cherenkov radiation, watch faces and gun sites can glow with the help of fluorescent chemicals activated by radioactive decay, but nothing glows green unaided in the open air like this, okay? Not fuel rods, not waste barrels, not Mr. Burns, nothing. Get that out of your mind, okay? So right away, we're gonna have to make an educated guess as to what Homer is actually mishandling in this scene. So let's look a little bit closelier. Homer Simpson works as a technician at the Springfield Nuclear Power Plant. And when the whistle blows, he's handling a small glowing rod at a distance with personal protective gear. I guess this guy behind him is totally fine though? Okay, good luck my dude. Anyways, this does not look like a uranium or plutonium fuel rod as the show and many fans suggest. And it doesn't look like a fuel pellet. What I think it does look like is something much scarier. So now we need an expert opinion. Today's video is sponsored by BetterHelp. It just hasn't been the same lately, has it? Want to talk to someone who isn't just waiting for their turn to speak? Then it's time to get better help. Better help is professional counseling done securely with a licensed professional therapist online. After the service assesses your needs, get matched for weekly phone or video sessions with your expert therapist. Log into your account anytime to send the messages and change your counselor at any time for free. Don't sit in a waiting room. Don't get stuck with the only therapist in your area. Don't pay any more than you have to because you have access to financial aid. If you want to start achieving your brain goals, if you want to start living a happier life, try going to betterhelp.com slash Kyle Hill to get 10% off your first month. Look, I have not one, but two people in my life who I love very much who use BetterHelp every week. I cannot say it's for everyone, but it might be for you. It's time to start acknowledging that mental health is health. Make it better with BetterHelp. The expert that we need is a one Tom Clausen, a former nuclear engineer at the Three Mile Island nuclear power plant and the man who brought me through Chernobyl. Tom took one look at the Simpsons intro and almost immediately confirmed the scariness that I had suspected. This glowing rod in the intro doesn't look like a fuel pellet or fuel assembly, no, it looks like the radioactive isotope known as Cobalt-60. Now, I've shown you a lot of scary warning signs on this show before, but none of them have been as scary as what's written here. I have literally never seen something so immediately dangerous that you need to write drop and run on the side. This is the synthetic isotope known as cobalt-60. Just a pinch of it in this capsule, so terrifying because it measures over three and a half thousand Curies, a unit we haven't talked about before on this program. A Curie, named after Marie Curie, is a measurement of pure radioactive decay, denoting 37 billion decays per second. Now, converting pure radioactive decay into a dose that your body might get from some radioactive thing is impossible without many assumptions. Thankfully, scientists have made these assumptions for us in the form of absorbed dose constants. Calculated for every known isotope, these absorbed dose constants consider any human outside of a radioactive thing as just a large cylinder of human weight water one meter away. For cobalt-60, the absorbed dose constant is 13 millisieverts per curie 
hour, one of the highest calculated. This is bad news for Homer. If Homer is handling something like a high-activity cobalt-60 source, a fact supported by its size, shape, and the fact that nuclear reactor cores are used to produce cobalt-60, we can show just how dangerous Homer's negligence in the Simpsons intro actually is. By dividing our absorbed dose constant into a known lethal dose of sieverts and multiplying by the radioactivity of the cobalt, we get a time value for how long Homer could be in contact with the source before he would die of acute radiation poisoning and widespread organ failure 100% of the time. Aria, would you do the honors? The Simpsons hasn't been good for a long time anyway. Just 10 minutes. That's how much of a dum-dum Homer is being in that intro. With this ultimate time limit now, life or death depends on Homer's drive home, how long he is close to the cobalt. But that means getting way nerdier. We'd have to have maps of Springfield and his home route and his average velocity among other details, and uh, so let's do that. In the Simpsons intro, Homer is in contact with the glowy thing for a total of 20 seconds of real time until he throws it out the window, which is both extremely dangerous and extremely illegal. Someone arrest him. Getting even nerdier, we can take an accurate, painstakingly recreated map of Springfield with the assumptions that Homer's traveling with an average velocity of around 35 miles per hour, which is fine for an area like that. Assume that the block length in Springfield is around 500 feet and that he takes the shortest route distance home in straight lines and that he's in contact with the cobalt 60 for the entire time as a worst case scenario <gasps> and that pushes the travel time for his route home just under three minutes or so getting even nerdier we can take a fully recreated springfield inside of the game city skylines complete with accurate traffic and whatnot and that traffic time gets bumped up to just under five minutes which is bad news for homer but it's so nerdy for us Ooh. Four different times, which in conjunction with our exposure equation, create four different doses. Let's see how Homer fares. And keep in mind, these exposures are very conservative. They are estimates of doses from a meter away, not inside your shirt, where the doses would be exponentially worse. So if any of these contact times turn out to be dangerous, they are in fact extremely dangerous. After 20 seconds with the source, our lowest estimate, radiation sickness is likely. After two and a half minutes, Homer has less than a two-thirds chance of making it to another episode. After five minutes, his odds get much worse. And so at best, after Homer leaves the power plant in the very first episode of The Simpsons, he will get home, sit down on the couch, and start vomiting. And at worst, he would instead drive himself straight to the hospital, where his prognosis isn't great. And if we're gonna be all comic book guy about this, at the time of this recording, The Simpsons intro has had 723 unique instances, which means if it didn't kill him, Homer Simpson would be the most radioactive man in history, and more realistically, it means that the longest running scripted series ever would have ended after just one episode, in a manner much better suited for a treehouse of horror, where a radioactive hole is eating into Homer's chest. Look, I know it's just a show, but it's one of the most popular shows in human history, and frankly, from depicting mutated fish to incompetent engineers, The Simpsons is one of the worst depictions of nuclear power and the nuclear industry of all time. It, it's, it's probably done a lot of harm for the nuclear cause. Worst technician ever. And for all these reasons, I must science it. Until next time. Plus, I like just I just like doing the math. <laughs> I'm a math addict. Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. If you want to join the facility, if you want our official Discord, if you want behind the scenes photos and videos, if you want videos early, if you want private members only live streams with me each month, <laughs> not like that. You can go to patreon.com slash Kyle Hill and join the facility today. And hey, if you support us just enough, get your name on Aria here each and every week. And as you can see, <laughs> there's thousands of you, so I have no idea how I'm gonna pass the time. You know, when I get on the Simpsons case about something like this, I do it because it's kind of ironic, right? 
The Simpsons is famous for having math PhDs and other smart people making super nerdy jokes, fitting in sciencey stuff and math equations into the show, and yet none of them seem to think or question what they were showing with regards to nuclear power. Where do you think a lot of public perception comes from? showing, you know, Atom Man and, and glowing goo barrels and, and the three-eyed fish, like tracing where people get the idea of what aliens look like to old alien films of little green men and close encounters of the third kind and, and whatnot, I think a lot of misconceptions could be probably traced back in part directly to The Simpsons. And that's, uh, it's not a great, for, for as much legacy as it has, that's not a great part of it. Until next time I said that already, thanks for watching. Doe! Doe!